Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to calculate this limit right here. And first of all, when you're plugging 0 into all the x, you do end up with 0 over 0. So we have to do more work. And in fact, this is from one of my subscribers. And the thing is that I'm not sure what's the intended solution for this question in your class. So I will show you both solutions. The first one is that we are not going to use Lapidus rule. We will do nothing with derivative, okay? And then the second solution is that we will use Lapidus rule, which is going to be actually easier. But anyway, let's take a look of this. Suppose you're in pre-cal, then you cannot use Lapidus rule, right? Okay, when we have two cube rules, what can we do? In fact, I have done the video in the past, right? And people were wondering that, why did we care about to rationalize the denominators or numerators? Perhaps this right here is a good reason for that. And let me remind you guys how to do that. First of all, let's look at the difference of two cubes. When we have a to the third power minus b to the third power, we can actually factor this, right? This is just equal to a minus b times a squared min uh, plus ab, and then plus b squared, like that. And now, if you take this right here as your a, and then you see the minus, and take that as your b, as long as I multiply the top and bottom by this part, and this is kind of like the conjugate for that, because when I multiply these two together, I will get a to a third power minus b to a third power, and this is how we can get rid of the cube roots. So now, that's what we are going to do. Let's take the top, and I will multiply this by, this is my a, I will have to have a squared, so that's equal to the cube root of, and let me put down the square inside, 1 plus sine x, and then square, like that. And then I will have to add a times b, and because both of them are inside of the cube root, so I can just put the insides, multiply them together. And, you know, everything's legitimate, so don't worry too much about, oh, can I really multiply it or not? But anyway, cube root of this times that, okay? So I will just put this down as 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x, all right? And in fact, we can do so because this is positive. That's also positive when x is approaching to 0, okay? So it's seriously legitimate. Anyway, lastly, we, mo we add b squared, which is that thing squared. So this is the cube root of 1 minus sine x, and you square that, okay? So that's pretty much the account you get. And of course, we will have to do the same thing on the bottom, so let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be the cube root. Okay, on the top, don't forget, you should write down the limit as x going to 0. The beauty of all this is that when you multiply out the top, it's just nicely equal to a to a third power minus b to a third power. This to a third power is just the inside, namely 1 plus sine x. So this right here is just 1 plus sine x. And let me put down parentheses around it. And then we will subtract the second thing to a third power, and it's just going to be the inside. So minus 1 minus sine x, like that. And the deal is that on the bottom, I'm not going to do anything. Usually when we're doing this, I multiply this right, it's because I want to fix the top. So that's why I multiply out the top only. On the bottom, leave it. So I will just rewrite that again. And now, let's multiply this out. 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x is just 1 minus sine square x. Yes, that's cosine square x. Doesn't really matter. Let me just write down 1 minus sine square x, okay? And then... And now, on the top, let's fix this. This is pretty much 1 minus 1, which is just going to be 0. And then sine minus negative sine. So that's going to be 2 sine x, isn't it? Okay, now, here is the deal. I will write this down. This right here is going to be the limit. On the top, I have 2 sine x over x times this quantity. And this right here, sine x over x, we know that approach to 1 when x is approaching to 0. And the deal is that we have to, well, we can pair things up. Because the limit of a product is the product of the limit under the condition that you have finite many products and each limit exists. Okay? 
So first of all, let me put down the 2 all the way in the front, and then let me first write the limit as x going to 0, and then I will write down sine x over x, okay? And a lot of you guys might have seen, uh, you know, the other way around, x over sine x. That's also approach 1, but you know, I can also use this, this is 1 as well. But anyway, and then I'm going to multiply by, as I said, it's uh, the limit of the product, it's the product of the limit. So I will do this. This is just like if you want to be super legit, okay? And you could have put a 2 over here as well, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, write this down again. So this is the cube root of 1 plus sine x, and then square, and then plus the cube root of 1 minus sine square x. And seriously, you can put that down as cosine square. Perhaps I will, just why not? Cosine square x, okay? And then this is plus... And in fact, you still see the button, it doesn't really matter. But, yeah. Okay, here's the deal. This is 2. This right here, as I said, E approach to 1. Why? You can check out the videos. I will have the links in the description for you guys. <laughs> okay, so there's a geometric proof that you have to know, that you have to use to, to argue that it's actually going to 1. And then, right here, <laughs> nice thing now, I just have a 1 on the top. When I plug in 0 into all the bottom, check this out. On the top, I have 1. On the bottom, sine of 0 is 0. 1 to the second power is 1. Inside of the cube root is still 1. So I have 1. Plug in 0 into here, cosine 0 is 1. And then square that is still 1. And then do the cube root of that is still 1. And you add 1. Lastly, same speech. So 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1. And in the end, 2 times 1 times 1 is 2, over 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. So the final answer to this is 2 thirds. And now, without wasting time, I'm going to show you guys the second solution. You can only do this if you have learned L'Hopital's rule, if your teacher taught you that already. Anyway, this only takes about like one line. The limit as x approaching to 0, the cube root of 1 plus sine x, and to do this, you have to know your derivative really, really well, all right? Well, well enough to not make mistakes. Anyway, this right here, it's a 0 over 0 situation, so I get to use L'Hopital's rule, okay? This is not percentage, this is 0 over 0. With that being said, I can go ahead, differentiate the top, differentiate the bottom, and perhaps I'll just draw a line like this to keep things in place. Okay, this is still the limit as x going to 0. All right, for this one, I will just do it uh, in detail for you guys at this one time. When you differentiate a cube root, this is going to be the third power. Namely, you look at this as 1 plus sine x, and then to the 1 third power, right? And when you differentiate this guy, you bring the power to the front, which is 1 third, and you subtract 1 to the exponent. Inside stays the same, so you write it as 1 plus sine x, and then 1 third minus 1, just do whatever you need to do, you get negative 2 thirds. And in the end, don't forget the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of 1 plus sine x, which is cosine x, okay? So that's pretty much the idea. And now, of course, I will just write this down for you guys. So the derivative of this is just that. Let me write it down this way. I have 1 on the top and cosine x on the top, so let me just put down cosine x on the top over the 3 on the bottom. And this right here, it's also going to go down in the denominator because of the negative exponent. The over 3 power is a cube root, so let me just write the cube root like this. And then this is 1 plus sine x, and then you square that guy like this, okay? So that's the uh, notation for that. Anyway, this is a minus version, okay? Minus, and this right here is minus sine instead of plus sine. So this become minus. This is actually going to be a minus cosine because the derivative of negative sine x right here is negative cosine. So it becomes 
negative cosine x on the top over pretty much this guy, but this is minus. So 3 cube root of 1 minus sine x, and then square that guy. And take a guess, what's on the bottom? The root here of 1. What well, the root here of x, which is 1. All right, so pretty, so pretty, so pretty. And now in the end, do the math. Plugging 0 into here, you get cosine 0, which is 1, okay? And then plugging 0 here, which is 0 for sine, and then plus 1 is 1. Square that is 1, do a cube of 1 is 1, and then you have the 1 over 3, right? Minus times minus is plus, and same speech, you get 1 third right here as well. So in the end, 1 third plus 1 third, luckily the common denominator, right? You still end up with 2 third, and that's the answer, just like this as well, okay? So, comment down below and let me know which method you guys like more. And um, yeah, thanks to the person who ever sent me this uh, question. I like it a lot, actually. But anyway, perhaps you also see the usage, usage of um, rationalize, either the numerator or denominator, right? Yeah, anyway. All right, hopefully you guys all like this video. And if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe, all right? I like to make my videos for you guys. And as always, that's it.